Good morning. How are you? How are you doing? Good. We got a record crowd. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope uh, at least a couple will show up. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'll, I'll, uh, do you want to speak first, or you want me to speak first, so I can make you a host, or? Uh, um, if you want to do just an intro and talk about um, the math steps we're going to go through, I think that'll be great. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds okay, good. Great. Sounds good. Oh, we got we got a, a person. All right. Oh, good. Good morning, Sophia. How are you? I'm good. Sorry. Thank you. And you? Good. All good, all good. I'm glad it's Friday. <laughs> Me too. more minutes and then we'll start in about two more minutes. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. And then um, what I'll do is I'll edit the, the video and I'll cut the beginning part and then cut it where it starts and then I'll send it to you. Okay, great. That sounds perfect. So yeah, I fixed the, I fixed the video. Apparently the the little camera on the top was mm -hmm. dirty. Oh, so, so I cleaned it and pressed. So. Good. I'm glad you got it to work. Yeah. So I had to take a bath. You know. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And if people come in, I'll just let them in. Okay. Um, let me put my little uh, PowerPoint up. Mm, I thought I had it. Oops, why did it go? Okay. Okay. Um, hello, Sophia. There will be probably more people coming in. Uh, but uh, my name is Javier Guerra. Uh, I'm an instructor uh, of an associate professor here at Northwest Vista College. Uh, I teach mathematics. Um, I've been teaching for about 22 years. I teach developmental math, uh, pre-cal, uh, college algebra, uh, and I'm, my focus is more, mostly in, in, in stats. I love to teach stats. I also teach the remedial part, and so uh, I'm going to show you today because uh, I took I took the um, uh, you, you're going to be taking a test called a Texas and that test is to get you certified uh, to become a teacher and so I took the test uh, recently and I noticed there were some uh, topics in math that are very important that you need to know in order for you to be successful in that part of the test so that's my purpose. I'm going to be going over some topics with you all in order for you to be prepared for that test. Uh, if there's any questions, uh, and I know Meredith sent you the, uh, the, the handouts, I'm going to be going over the handouts. Uh, I won't do all of them. I'm going to do a few because we're limited on time. We're going to be doing it for about an hour. 
And so I'll, I'll touch on, on a few topics and those worksheets that uh, we, we gave you, uh, they have the answers also in the back. So that way you guys can practice uh, at home uh, before you guys take the test. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Oh, I just said, okay. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, okay, so. Uh, so what is the text exam? So the text stands for Texas Examinations of Educator uh, Standards. The Texas exams are a group of assessments that determine whether or not a candidate has the knowledge and skills needed for an entry level educator position in Texas public schools. So when you when you take your your test, there are um, specifics. So you, it just depends on which which type of a teacher you want to be, and that'll tell you what kind of test that you're going to be taking. You may have to take one. You may have to take two. It just depends on what type of teacher you you you're gonna be want you want to be. Um, so if you want to take uh, if you want to take a practice uh, Texas exam, uh, if you Google. Uh, practice Texas exams, you'll have, a, there's a ton, there's tons of uh, websites where you all can practice taking it. What, what I did was I, I took this one at the mometrics.com and there they gave me a whole bunch of options of what, uh, which test I needed to take. And so I was like, wow, that's, I'm overwhelmed. So you're going to have to ask your advisor uh, which one you're going to have to be taking and go to that website and just, just try it out. See, just feel comfortable taking the exam um, and see which specific subjects you're going to be needing to take. Is, is um, website... So just let your advisor know. Hello, Joseph. How are you, sir? Hi, sorry. Uh, is that website, are the tests free of charge? Like the practice? Yes, yes. Those are free. The one that I took is free of charge. Uh, this one that I have on the on the on the PowerPoint, that one was free, and it gives you the results like maybe like in, within five minutes, it'll email you your results to see what you you missed, uh, and so it's a good indicator of how the test will be like when you when you all take it. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, topics that are important to know if you need to take the math portion of the exam, that's what I'm here for. Uh, and so these are the main three uh, topics that I saw that were very important for you all. They're not, they're not challenging like the GRE. If you, if you guys think about going for your master's, uh, you'll have to take another exam called the GRE. But these, these are more, <clears throat> they're, less, they're less complicated. Uh, but you got to know, you have to know these three things. You should be able to know how to solve a multi-step equation. Um, you need to be able to find coordinates and graph a linear equation, uh, and also to be able to evaluate functions at a given value. So we're going to do, we're going to do some examples uh, today. Um, so that way you guys know how to do the, the basic stuff because uh, they don't get complicated. They just get they're just real basic stuff that you guys need to know for that test. Questions? Do you guys have questions? So far, no, I'm good. All right, so <laughs> you all are, you're, you're probably all math majors, right? Yeah. I'm yeah. kidding, I know you guys are not math majors. Oh, I am. <laughs> so what kind of teachers do you all wanna be? I, I am a math major. I'm, okay. Yeah, cool. I'm gonna go for a bachelor's of math with a teaching certification. Okay. Good. 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 And how about yourself, Sophia? What? What? What is uh, your? What are you gonna be teaching? Uh, elementary, EC through six. Uh, cool. Do you have a specific uh, subject that you're gonna be focusing on? No, just uh, ESL. Okay. Good. So. Good. That's excellent. That's excellent. Cool. Okay, so that's wonderful. Okay, so I am going to switch my um, my page now to the handout uh, that was given to you all. 
and we're going to work out some of these problems uh, that you guys are going to need to to know. So the first one we're going to do first is called uh, solving uh, multiple equations. Okay. So, and there's there's going to be some things that that uh, that I was taught when I was a when I was in school taking math that seem kind of kind of weird, but hey, that helped me get through my degree. So, when you're doing multi-step equations, I was always taught this acronym. Uh, You guys remember PEMDAS? Mm -hmm. PEMDAS was a parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide. Okay, so for these, uh, it was D, F, C, A, S, M, D. And so my teacher asked me, well, how do I remember this? Well, she said, well, why don't you remember, don't feed cats after supper because they might die. I'm <laughs> like, wow, really? <laughs> and so we're like, what does that mean? Well. The first thing you do is you have to distribute. Right? You have to do any distributing properties first. Then you take care of all the fractions, if there are any fractions. Then you combine my terms. And then when you get to these two last steps, this is where the one where you have to worry about the variable. So you want to add and subtract terms from one side of the equation to the other. So you want to add or subtract. And then you multiply or divide. All right, so that's how you take care of these uh, solving multiple step equations. So the ones that we're going to do, uh, they don't involve, um, they don't involve uh, the fractions. Uh, I didn't see any fractions in the test, so I'll, that's why I'm not going to go over those, but you basically going to have to do the distributing, the combine like terms, the add, subtract, and the multiply, divide. So, so uh, I think, was it your name, Jonathan, sir? Joseph. Joseph, Joseph, yeah. When you take yours, uh, you will have to do uh, stuff with fractions. So I think there was some in the back that had fractions. And if they didn't, I will email them to you, uh, the website where I got these from. Is that fine? Yes, of course. Okay, cool. All right, so let's do let's do the first the first one. So remember, your goal get the ones and for this. Since I both I have ends on both sides, I'm going to. I'm going to do my combined like terms. So that would give me 2n, right? And then of course you you do the you do the last step. We don't we don't have to add or subtract to get terms from one side or the other. So then we apply the the multiply divide. So we're going to divide by 2 and so your n is uh, 2. Seems fairly easy, right, guys? Yes. Fairly easy. <laughs> okay, good. Good. All right. Number two, a little bit more complicated. And so what you want to do is you want to look on, on each side of the equals. There's nothing that I can do on the left, but is there anything that I can do on the right side? What combine do you like terms. That's right. So we can combine these like terms. That would give us 7v, right? And then what I want to do is I want to get this v term by itself. So this is where you guys are going to be using your add and subtract uh, move. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. Cancel. Get 7v, and then I'm going to divide by 7, and so v will equal to negative. It doesn't matter which order you have the letters. You could have you could have done negative 2 equals uh, v, or vice versa. 
Sounds cool? Mm -hmm. Yes. Sounds cool, all right. Okay, so so basically these, these are gonna be similar. You can practice these at home, uh, practice them. I'm gonna go through and skip, and I'm gonna do the ones that are a little, a little bit more different than the ones that we did. So we're gonna do number seven next. And so this one, this one will involve the distributive property first. So I have to, on this one, I don't have to do anything on the left side, but this one I have to distribute the negative three. So you get negative three X minus six, right? And I wanna get my letters to one side. So I'll go ahead and move this sticks over to the other side. Doesn't matter which way you go. Okay. And then you divide by negative three. Voila. So negative four is equal to x, or x is equal to negative four. Pretty easy, guys. Pretty easy. Yes. So far. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. The other ones are going to be similar. Uh, I'm going to go to the back page because uh, then they involve a little bit more, a little bit more um, step. Okay. So I'm going to let you guys pick. All right. Because I did all of them last night. I stayed up till seven o'clock for you guys working on this. <laughs> All right. So, which which one from eleven through twenty looks fun that we could do? Fifteen looks fun. Eighteen looks easy. <laughs> All right. Which one? You said fifteen. Yeah, fifteen looks. Fun. Fun. All right, let's do 15. I think I'm gonna need a new paper for this one because I'm gonna go, I think, way above, way below the, the what I have in the paper. Okay, so let's, yeah, let's do 15. Now, this one's, this one's complicated now. You, you just know that in the test, they're not gonna give you a, a problem of this caliber because this takes too long. They want you to take the test quick. So, but this is good practice. This is very good practice. Okay, so. I am going to see if there's anything that you guys can do on the left side first. What can you do on the left side? By the constants. All right, so we can combine. We can combine the uh, the ten and p, and then we can combine these two. All right, so we're gonna get what is that? Nine. Nine p. Minus two. Okay, so I did the left side. Now let's look at the right side of the equals. What 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 do we need to do on the right side? Distribute. That's right. And I think there's going to be two sets, right? We have to distribute on on both of those. So we're going to get negative four p minus eight minus six p plus. Okay, now, uh, is there anything else that we, got, we can do on the right side? By and like terms? Yes, sir. Okay, so I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna combine these two and the constants. So we get negative 10p minus p. Excellent. Okay, we're almost done. All right, so now I want to get my P's to one side and my the ones that don't have P's to the other side. So what would you guys like me to do? You want me to move the 9 to the to the right or the 10P to the left? 10 to the left. All right. You add... Uh, 
19 P minus two equals negative two. And then I'm going to uh, add two So I get 19p equals zero. And if you divide, okay, so this is this is a question that I saw in the test. Divided by 19, is it zero or is it undefined? Zero. Excellent. That's right. In the test, when I took it, the there was an answer that had a they had a I think it was seven divided by zero. This is undefined. So any number divided by zero is considered undefined. To rule. And you want to hear that? You want to hear the uh, cheesy way of remembering? <laughs> okay, so the easy way of remembering this is where is zero at? The bottom denominator. Okay, another word for bottom and denominator, another word for it. Under. Under, that's right. So I remember it as underfine. Get it? Uh. Underfine. <laughs> that's how I remember that. So yeah, this is, this is. Uh, thing you have to remember for the class is that undefined business. So, so if zero, if zero is at the top, it's zero. But if it's in the under, it's undefined. Okay, all good. Excellent. Yes. If you can get through this, this one, this one. If you can get through this one with flying colors, the the rest are pretty the pretty simple. <laughs> okay. All right. So remember, this this handout has uh, the answers to them. So I, I I included we included in the packet the the uh, the problems and and on the I think the next I think first two first two pages are, are the problems and then the last two are the problems and the answers. So yeah, just practice those. All right, I'm gonna move. I'm gonna move to the next. Is um, oops, the wrong one. We're gonna do the graphing one. Yeah. Okay. So on the test, on that Texas exam. Uh, they didn't have you. They didn't have you draw the picture, but I didn't. I didn't run, run into ones that had ha, had you draw them. What they had you do uh, is I'm going to have you do both, just in case. But what they want you to do is they want you to create what they call a T table. Have you all heard of that before? Yes. Yes. Okay. They're going to want you to do a T table. And so when you do a T table, you are going to just find any three numbers uh, for the X and you substitute them into your X. So that way you can figure out the Y value that it corresponds to. That's the main, that's the main thing that I noticed on the test. So let's practice this. So um, can you guys give me any three numbers that I can substitute in for my X? Three, five, seven. Nice. Three, five, seven. Okay. So we are going to substitute into the equation. I'm going to write my equation. I'm going to write it three times because I have three uh, numbers that we all selected. Right. And I'm going to substitute uh, 
in each equation the value of x for each one. So you told me 3, a 5, and a 7. And we're going to do each one individually. So uh, what's that equal to? Negative 6. Negative 6. So we get negative 6 minus 2. We're going to get negative 8. So we now know the y value when x is 3, it's going to be 4. We do the same thing with this one. Negative 10 minus 2. We get negative 12. Next one, we get negative 14 minus 2 is equal to negative 16. So doing this table is very important. If you want to graph it, Okay, let's see you guys remember how to graph it. Do y'all remember how to graph it? Uh, sir, first before we do it, um, in your, your Y chart there, um, your negative eight should be in place of that four. I think it was just a typo. For this one? Oh, yes, 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 you're right, sir. Okay. Good eye, sir. Yes, that should be an eight. Wait, wait. My, uh, yeah, you are correct, sir. That should be a negative eight. Negative eight, negative 12, and negative 16. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Yeah, I like these little things. These are, these are cool. <laughs> okay, so how do we, how to graph it? Do you remember how to graph it? Thank you. So you have your X and you have your Y, right? So it's kind of like, you ever, you guys ever play, um, there's this game called Battleship. You remember Battleship? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Oh, that was a good game. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's exactly what, what, this, uh, what this grid is like. It's, like. it's like playing Battleship. So your three is, is plotted along the X, your X axis. First number is plotted left or right. And then the second one, the Y, is the up and down movement. So I'm gonna go three spaces, three spaces to the right, and then I'm gonna go up eight. And I think I'm gonna go down because it's negative. So it's gonna go way down, three, eight. So it should be maybe about there. Right, and then the other one is five, um, Five. I'm gonna go way, way, way below. Oh, careful. Oh, someone's laughing. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so, if I plot the points, they're gonna, it's gonna go in that form. So I just connect my dots and boom. There's your, there's your graph. So it's going. It's going downward. Yeah, that's correct. Right. It's going to go downward. Okay. Make sense? Yes, it yes. does. Okay. Cool beans. All right. So let's, let's do another one. I'm going to go the, the, the next, the next few are going to be very similar. Okay. Next few are going to be very similar. I'm going to do one that are kind of this we can do, I don't know, let's see, let's pick. Um, <clears throat> here are your choices. You want to do three, four, five, or six. Which one looks fun? <laughs> six. 
Six. Let's do the six one. <laughs> it looks like the hardest one. All right, let's do the six. Excellent choice. Excellent six. So, bump it up. Okay, so. Okay, so um, how many of you all love fractions? <laughs> <laughs> what else would we rather be doing than I fractions? take it that's a no. <laughs> you like fractions, sir? Love is a strong word. I don't like fractions either. Yeah, <laughs> fractions are not my cup of tea. So let me show you guys a technique how, how you guys can get rid of fractions in a problem. So... Let's count how many fractions there are in this problem. So this is not, that one's not, but these two, you see how these two are, are fractions? You wanna find a least common denominator for a four and a two, what would it be? Four. All right, four. You could have chosen four, you could have chosen eight, anything, right? Anything that both four and two can go into. So we're gonna do four. So here's what you do. You get this four and you multiply it. You multiply every term by four. Okay, so I go through and I multiply. So four that's zero. Four times x is four x. This one's gonna be four times one. That's four over four y. And this one's gonna be four over two. Because it's really one underneath of it. I go back and I can simplify the fractions. What is four over four equal to? One. And what is four divided by two? Two. Okay. So I have four x plus one y of y plus two. And I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm not gonna, I don't need to, to simplify it anymore, but you guys are gonna help me out. You're gonna find me three numbers to plug in for my x. What do you wanna choose? Zero, four, and negative one. Correct. All right, cool. Okay, so I got my numbers. I need to write this equation uh, three times. And I'm going to substitute the uh, the x values that we chose into the equation I put y. Zero, four, negative one. Okay, 
So let's let's do the we'll do the first equation. So I'm gonna get zero equals zero plus y plus two. Um, I can combine these two. We get two plus y. And to solve for y, I'm gonna move my two over to the other side, right? So negative two equals y. So I've got my first dollar in my, in my table. Then we'll do the other ones. Zero equals 16 plus y plus two. I'm gonna combine these two terms. That's 18 plus y. Subtract 18. Negative 18. And the last one, negative four plus y plus two. I can group these two. Negative two plus one. Two is equal to one. I'm gonna I'm gonna attempt to draw it in case they ask you to graph it. So I have my I have my T card already. My coordinates were zero negative zero negative two. Okay, so zero y here's my x. So zero negative two. So I'm gonna go one two here's there's this, there's the first point, zero, negative two. Then I have to do four, 18, negative 18, one, four, negative eight, ooh, that's gonna be very low. Three, <laughs> four, five, six. It's gonna be way down there. Way down there. Way down there. Way down there. But then we have that negative one and two. So negative one and I don't think it's coming out right, is it? Negative one and two. Negative one. Two. So the graph of that should go Something like that. I missed the. I missed the. I missed the dot. I'm gonna make the dot big so we can. We can. Yeah. There you go. So it's going. It's going in a, in a, uh, negative slope fashion again. Mr. Gare, I got a question for you. Yes, sir. When we graph it, are they gonna ask us to put the, uh, label the points like uh, in parentheses? No, sir. I. I no, sir. They what they what they do is they uh, it's multiple choice. So they will provide you with a graph, and then you choose from from the graphs which one fits uh, your result. Okay, so so we don't have to draw if so we don't no. draw. But if we had well, to, you them. you may you will have to, but you will have to uh, uh, verify your your res, uh, results with theirs. 
but they will give you they will give you a, a grass to choose from. Now, uh, when I took it, uh, the test, the practice one, they did not have uh, graphs in in the test. They were specifically looking for these numbers. They were looking for those. Okay. When I took it, so yeah. Are you are you going to be doing the math? The are you going to become a math teacher, sir, Richard? Well, I'm looking at the elementary area, but I'm, I'm trying to keep my options open, you know, um, depending on where my strengths end up taking me, you know, I'm just want to be well versed wherever I go. That's right, sir. Very good. Hey, everyone should be math. You guys are good at math. Might as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sophia, since you're doing ESL, can you, uh, would you be able to, to teach math in Spanish? Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I only know a little bit of Spanish, but maybe. <laughs> yeah, me too. I only know enchiladas tacos. <laughs> That's all I know. That's all I know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, you know, uh, if you, for those that are, are thinking of becoming a math teacher, man, you guys would make a, you would make, you'd be a, a, a high demand if you were able to be a uh, bilingual math teacher. Wow, uh -huh. that would just be um, very awesome if you could get. You would be highly, highly demanded to teach <laughs> for their school. Give me options, guys. Give me options. Okay, so did you guys have any problems with identifying the T table? No. Okay, good. Because because remember, look, look, you see how it builds. We, we uh, doing the solving equations helped us doing these, figuring out what these were. So it kind of built on, it, on itself, you know what I mean? Mm hmm Okay, so I gave you some more practice. Um, I threw in there uh, some of the other things, slopes and all that. I didn't see any of those on the test, but uh, the ones that are going to be going into math, you will, I would highly recommend you go through these topics. So um, I'm not going to go into those, but if you YouTube it or, or um, what's the other one, Khan Academy, mm -hmm. uh, just to brush up your skills on it, they, it's fairly easy, fairly easy, so don't worry. Could you repeat that other okay. slide again? What? Oh, the Khan Academy? Khan Academy. It was uh, YouTube. You can do YouTube. Yeah. Uh, or let's see. Khan Academy. Khan Academy. Yeah, those two, oh, those two show you videos of how to do math. Uh, this one's pretty cool. The Khan Academy, it has a person in there going through all the steps. Um, good review for, for your math part. Or you guys can, con you can uh, contact me. I can help you. Yeah. I can help you. Okay. So now last, the last topic that I noticed on the test, uh, and it's pretty much the same thing that we did, uh, right, we've been doing right now. It's called uh, functions. Let's see if I can find my paper. Functions. Um, Okay. Okay. I'm trying to find my paper. One 
second, guys. I think I misplaced it. I had it right now. Here it is. I found it. All right. It was hiding. Okay, here it is. Um, evaluating functions. Okay, so for this topic, you know how we did the T table, right? Well, in these, they only ask you to substitute one single value into the formula. That's all they do. There was like four of them, four questions on the test that had asked me that. I was like, really? That is so cool. <laughs> So let's look at let's look at evaluating functions. So they will supply you with the formula, right? And they will also at, tell you the number that you're going to substitute. So for this particular one, they say find h. Evaluated at six. So what you do is you substitute for the variable. You're going to substitute the six in. You don't have to do nothing on the right side, but you do have to do. I'm sorry, you don't have to do nothing on the left side, but you do have to do something on the right side. So you guys know what these are, right? Absolute value. Absolute value. You know, what do absolute values do, sir? What do absolute values do? You just take the basically the positive of it. Yes, this is this would be this would be very useful in real life. You have someone negative in there, like a parent or a student. You put them in the box; they come out positive. <laughs> Isn't that cool? Anything <laughs> you put inside, everything comes out positive. I'm going to use that. So you guys, you guys, yeah, you guys are going to have, you guys are going to have to have lots of patience uh, in your field because there's going to be times where a parent or something, you just got to keep it cool, you know, just keep it cool, you'll be good. So that's right. Anything, anything inside of the absolute value comes up positive. So your answer comes to be uh, eight. So what about the three and on the other side of the equal sign? Oh yeah, what about the three? Good, good. Okay, there's, hi, all right, sir. You are on a roll. Very good, sir. That's right. You're supposed to add three. Notice what I, what did I forget? I forgot to put the plus three. So when you guys take your test, make sure that when you do your tests, you make sure that you write the problem correctly because I already messed up. I put, I only put the absolute value. I, I didn't put the three. So you're right. On the other side, the equal put sign, the you put H um, with the six in parentheses. Shouldn't have been opposite because you're substituting H for six, right? Or is that? No, no, not the, not the H. I'm substituting the, the T. Uh, whatever, whatever inside the the uh, parentheses is, that's where you substitute the the but number. Bring, but wouldn't you bring that down? The H um, parentheses six on the left side. Uh, this yes, like this. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So what is your final answer? 11. 11, perfect. Excellent, cool. <laughs> so remember, remember guys, remember to, to keep, keep track of the problem that you're doing because you could make a mistake like that, like I just did. I forgot to put the plus three. So you wanna make sure that you write the problem uh, correctly when you do the process because th th that's what they'll do on the test is that they will they will they will put for one of the answers they would have put they would have put eight on there and of course you would have marked it eight my answer so they'll throw okay, in some, they'll throw in uh, some uh, some answers on there to just to throw you off sir um are we before we move out of this one here 
Um, don't we have to isolate the H and remove the six, move it to the other side? Or no, sir. No, this one you're just you're just gonna plug in the value that they're yeah, giving okay. you. So this, yeah, you're just gonna plug it in. That's all it is. We're not solving. We're just evaluating. I see. Right. We're just evaluating. We're not solving. All right. Right. So we try two? Yes. All right, so let's try two. Uh, so, so yeah, so the, these functions that they provide you with, it is a formula. So when they throw in a little bit variable there, this, this variable, this G is just the name of the formula, right? The, the, part in parentheses is going to be the variable that's used in the formula. So of course this is A, so your formula should have an A on there. And so they're telling you find G, what is it, one, one. And so when you substitute everywhere there's an A, you just plug in a one. What do you do first? So this is your this is your uh, this is your base, right? And so we have to we have to evaluate the exponent part of it. So we're gonna want us to evaluate the exponent value. So this would be what three times three. one is three, so you get three minus two. So you get three to the first, right? Yes. And so G1 is going to be? Three. Three, correct. Uh -huh. That's right. Three. Would it be okay if we just drop that one on the left hand side or does it have to still remain there? Uh, it has to remain there because you're, you're, um, that's, that's, this is the result when you substitute the one. It's, it's, this is equivalent to if we were to, to do the T table. Yeah. This would be the one and that would be the three. If you were to graph it. So your X is that and your result is the Y. Oh, okay, I see it. Thank you. Okay, let me see. Um, we have time for one more. We have time for one more, Meredith, is that all right? Oh yeah, we're doing well. All right, okay, all right, so. Let's see, I'm going to let you guys pick which one looks fun. 14? 14. Wow, that's a good one. Okay, 14. Let's look at 14. <clears throat> Okay, 14, all right, so let me make sure, did I write it right? Okay, cool, I wrote it right. Okay, cool. All right, so 14 is a booger. Okay, so what am I going to substitute everywhere there's an A? What do I substitute? A minus two. Yeah, I have to plug in 
an A minus two. So here's what I do. I, I tell my, cause my students always have trouble with, with, uh, <clears throat> with these. So I had them do this. So I said, look, why don't you, why don't you write the problem again, but this time take out the letter. Since A is used, take it off. And on the expression on the right, go ahead and take off the letter and put parentheses. And then on the next step, you go ahead and substitute what they want you to evaluate it at. So that way you won't, you won't, uh, don't miss any, anything. So we don't have to do anything with this and this one's done. Okay, so I have to figure out how to do this part. So what are you guys gonna do on the top? I'll do the bottom for you, how's that? How do you do the top? Distribute. Distribute. Okay, so this would be 3a minus six plus two. Continue on. Uh, I distributed, so now I can combine. Minus four. And I can't do anything else. That's it. There's your answer. Questions, guys? No, you made it pretty easy to <laughs> understand and substitute. Okay. Cool. Okay, so I'm offering you guys because you guys are, you guys are, I want you guys to be the best teachers ever. Um, and you guys are making history because you guys are probably going to be probably doing remote teaching, learning how to use that. And then when we do face-to-face -face teaching in the classroom, you're gonna use that as an advantage for your students. So please, please, if you all have any questions, you have any topics that you wanna go over with me, I'm here for you all. You can email me, we can meet up when we can meet up or we can Zoom at this point, we can Zoom. But email me if you all have any questions, you want to review something, um, I'm here for you all. Questions, guys? All right, so I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful day. Please be safe. Uh, we're going to get through this. Don't worry. It's going to take a while, but we'll get through this. Probably by, I want to say, hopefully in the fall, we'll be able to do some sort of face to face. But I think we're going to have to just do, uh, we're going to have to cover up. We have to wear masks, I think. Uh, but it's going to take a while. But just hang in there. Focus on becoming the best teacher that you can be, and you're going to shape our kids minds to uh to to become good citizens all right thank you all did uh, uh meredith did you have anything to add i don't have any good questions. thank you guys for attending we really appreciate it thank, thank you. you thank you for having us oh welcome you welcome guys y'all have a blessed day and be safe you. you too guys thank you thank you Okay, thank you. Bye. There we go. Bye. Thank you, Javi. Bye. Bye.